Okay. Uh, you can hear me, I hope. Yes, perfectly. <laughs> Good. I was for a short second not sure. Okay, so let's uh, start by saying hello. Hello, people. Very nice that you um, are here. I will now disable myself and uh, start with my talk, which um, you can read here is about adding motion to concept art. And by the way, uh, just uh, in case you want to get or take anything from this talk, here is an address which will lead you to this page, to this very page we are looking at. And it will contain all the information. You can later download the project files. Uh, there will also be the link to the talk, of course. But there's also basically a step-by-step -step guide of what I will explain today, even with a little uh, screenshots of all the settings. So if you want to see something, then uh, yeah, this is the way to go, this URL here. Okay, uh, but let's start now by uh, a short moment. Who, I, who am I? I'm Simon and I'm, uh, as you can see, uh, a VFX artist. And just some weeks ago, I worked on this little shader, one shader to rule them all. Yeah. Uh, big name, <laughs> but the basic idea is that you have one shader and of course now the video doesn't work. Um, Hello, video. Oh man, that's uh, a very nice start. So, oh, now it works. So there's one shader behind all of these effects, the fire, the smoke, this wonky red water here, the trail, this advertisement sign, also the normal water up here. Uh, everything is based on one shader. And I um, asked myself the question if we could use this shader to add a little bit of motion to concept art and the answer is here this is the uh, final result i hope you like it um, i was uh, very happy to find this concept on artstation it is from stephen corman and he allowed me to use this concept for this presentation and as you see um, there's a lot of uh, moving elements here the flags and little fire the fire i added it is not uh, in the original concept art just so that you see uh, here is the, the original concept art yes and uh, it's amazing i really like the concept but as you can see it's a bit static because it's uh, yeah it's a concept it's an image so i thought maybe it could be nice to try to add a little bit of motion with as simple tools as possible so this is not an advanced vfx talk this is more like hey you have a good concept art which you want to uh, um, add a little bit of life to here are some tools uh, how to set this up and um, you might know this uh, uh, as a little example there are a lot of music videos on youtube for example something like this uh, where you have just some elements um, which are moving and it's just nice uh, so it's maybe not the perfect rain simulation or something like that, but it's uh, good enough and it's just a lot of uh, life and love. So um, we will not only look uh, into how to set up such a scene, we will also um, improve the workflow a little bit by auto exporting all the layers in Photoshop because I'm a very lazy artist and I really don't like to do file save as uh, png or whatever uh, 20 times for all the layers in the um, uh, uh, from the psd and then we will auto import these things in unreal because i'm also in unreal a lazy artist <laughs> because uh, i don't want to import all these things and manually uh, update the textures when they changed and then we also will have a little dive into the Unreal modeling tools because uh, just, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago, I didn't even know that there are modeling and UV tools in Unreal. And I wanted to explore them a little bit and show you what I found. And uh, the question, why are we doing this? I showed you just one example, the music video. It just, uh, it's very nice to add motion, but also Unreal is free. and. I guess motion artists would use After Effects for that, but I don't have After Effects and I don't have the money to buy After Effects. So I thought, hey, maybe we can use Unreal for that. So that was my little introduction. And now I would like to give you an overview about the Unreal scene setup. And then we start step by step um, yeah, 
and doing everything. So this is the Unreal scene. It looks uh, basically exactly like before what you saw on the YouTube, but just uh, just a little overview. So here we have a camera and then in different diff uh, distances from the camera, we have um, these planes with some image stuff drauf, which is moving. And the reason why we have these different um, distances is basically that we get a very nice parallax effect. If I move the camera, a little bit here and here I set up the, that we look through the camera then you will see oh nice parallax effect when we move it right that adds a lot of depth to the scene when the camera moves and we will make the camera move okay but before we come to that of course we have to first um, export our Textures. So I will copy this uh, PSD, which I prepared a little bit, and I will um, uh, I will actually create a folder textures in here, and then whoop, put the little image in there, and then open it in Photoshop. And I would like to focus your view on the layer naming. Uh, because you will notice that first uh, I named, uh, I put a little number in front of the layer name just to have the right sorting. So I know four is behind five and so on. That will be interesting later. But more interesting is that we have um, .png here. And I guess uh, not many people name their layer and layer folders uh, like a file name. The reason for that is simple. When uh, th there is a very, very nice um, feature in Photoshop. If you go into file and uh, generate image assets, then you will see that next to your PSD here, there is now a subfolder and inside you will find all these things exported for you. So if we go into here, we look at it, it's perfect. So that is something very, very nice. Um, because yeah, I'm lazy. I don't want to do all of that uh, manually, okay? And on the other side, we can import these things in Unreal uh, manu uh, no, not manually, sorry. So here I have a live folder, which I just created for you to uh, in the prepared folder, by the way, if you later uh, download the project files, this is my preparation. And in live, there is uh, uh, the stuff I do now. So here is the texture folder. And what we can do is it's a bit hidden in editor preferences. Uh, in loading and saving, there is a um, section called monitor content directories. Um, and you can add a new directory to monitor, which we will do. And I will point this to the directory, uh, yeah, to the subdirectory of Photoshop. Oop. And then it's very well hidden. You have to unfold this here and then you can browse. And now we can map this uh, monitor directory to a directory in our project structure in my case the just created live thing and now we will see nothing <laughs> great but i can show you that it works um uh, by let me just put this here i will create a new um little layer which i will call simon.tga and then i will paint a little self portrait no? Oh no, that's, that's too right. Okay, like that. And now I can save. And you will see that um, something very unpleasant happened. Instead of a nice Simon Im image, we got an error TXT. Thank you Photoshop for that. It will tell us that uh, TGA is not supported. Uh, TGA is a very exotic format, at least for Adobe, it seems. Uh, that's the reason why I used PNG. And when you use PNG, then you will see, ah, the error, uh, at least the error TXT is automatically um, uh, removed. And now we will have uh, the Simon image here. It's cropped to the extents of the picture. If you don't want to have it cropped, you can just create a little um, a layer mask, uh, which is just white. And then you will see it is now not cropped anymore. And you saw these little um, Unreal notifications here because now Unreal noticed, oh, there is a new file. And if you look at this, it's um, yeah, it's actually the new file. So without uh, that, we have to press import. The question is, of course, now, hey, Unreal, why don't you import these things? Um, Unreal is like, well, these have existed before you enable this uh, directory monitoring. So I will just ignore them. So my little super smart workaround I just delete all of them. 
go into Photoshop, uh, disable this feature, boop, and then enable it again. And then we should see hopefully an automated import of all these textures. Yeah. And by the way, what I also really like is uh, here's our uh, my, my little Simon self portrait. If we go into Photoshop and we delete this uh, layer, it will also remove here and also Unreal will notice, oh, it's gone. Do we want to delete it? Yes, I will. Okay, so that's very, very cool. Now I would like to create a new scene um, to show you how to make uh, these things. And I will just create an empty level with nothing in it. And now we have the textures here. And normally what you, what you would have to do to display these textures in a level, you would have to make some geometry and then a material and then uh, assign the texture to the material and then assign the material to the geometry. And this is all boring and takes forever. Um, luckily, there is a very nice uh, function in, in, in Unreal. You can just mark your textures, right click and then sprite actions create sprite. And voila, we have now sprites here, which I will just move into this just created folder. And these sprites, we don't have to do anything with them. We just can drag and drop them into the scene and wow, everything is just working. That does not happen so often, uh, does not happen so often in game development, right? Um, before we uh, continue here, I would like to create a camera, camera actor, and I put it to uh, zero, 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 and then rotate it by 90 degrees. And as I told you before, when I move the camera, I get this parallax effect, uh, of course. And uh, but this is a background element, so we don't want to have it moving so much. So I will just scale it up uh, by 30 times and move it far, uh, oops, far away. Oh, that's, that's maybe a little bit too far. That's, uh, sorry. <laughs> that's too far away, okay. And then here in another option, I will enable our camera view and then I can see how far I should move it away so that it fits the scope. And by the way, I have to set up the aspect ratio. And now uh, there will be a little bit of math happening because I know that our image is 2000 pixels wide and 900 in height. So when I uh, divide this, oh no, not by 900, I get an aspect ratio of 2.22222 and I will just put this here and now I have the correct um, uh, yeah, uh, aspect ratio for our little camera. And I can just put the image here very nicely. Okay, so now uh, it gets a bit boring. I hope uh, I can make this as quick as possible. I just will add a little bit more stuff to the scene. So here we have a nice background. Then we have some nice mountains. I will, by the way, not set up um, the whole scene one to one uh, as you saw it before. I will focus on the most important elements, uh, but you can, like I said, uh, download these project files and then inspect everything. And I will give you all the knowledge today to understand what you are seeing there. So don't worry, I will just gently push the little clouds behind um, the castle. Uh, so now we got a very nice um, uh, background. And now let's focus on the foreground. Instead of uh, scaling this very nice gentleman sitting here in front of the mountains, instead of scaling him up, I will scale it down and then move it so that we see it. Eh, eh, it's a bit, it's a bit fast here. Everything is working in such uh, big dimensions is hard. So I will just put it here. And now we will see when I move the camera, we get a ah, nice parallax effect, right? Okay, and then um, the last thing I will add are the flags, which I will scale even smaller, put them at zero, zero, zero again, and then a little bit in front. And now we already got a very nice scene going safe and then in live and I will name it level lost city. Okay. So now um, we have a very nice uh, 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 scene set up and a very nice parallax effect going on. 
Now let's add some motion to the camera and we do that by first creating a level sequence which I will uh, name LS for level sequence and then Lost City. This is just a little sequence where you can add the camera we just created Boop. and nothing happens. Now we would, would like uh, to add some motion, sh uh, motion, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, well, it's not untrue. We will add some camera shake, yeah. And this is surprisingly easy. I will say, oh, nice uh, question, Anvil. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> I tested this four or five times and it never crashed at this point at least. So let's hope that it will um, show us something which we had before. So uh, I don't see the chat, but I guess right now there is angry flames uh, spawning in there. Okay, so uh, here is the um, uh, our level bar. Oh yeah, and here is even the sequence. And now I will just add the camera. Oh no, the camera is uh, already added. So that's very nice. Thank you, Unreal. Uh, what I actually wanted to do is I wanted to create a blueprint, but don't worry, we don't have to program. We just have to type here camera shake and then we can use the default camera shake base. Okay, we name it uh, BP for blueprint and then cam shake live and when you open it we see a lot of wasted space <laughs> and uh, a little bit of uh, useful ui for us this stuff here we can forget everything uh, only these values here are interesting and the first thing i put the uh, uh, duration to a very long value because i basically want to have it never um, end and just as a test we can here in rotation there is a rotation amplitude multiplier and we can set this to one save compile save again and now and that's really beautiful we can open the sequence and here in the camera actor we can add a track which is called camera shake and add our camera shake and now when you play it the camera shake i move it here to the beginning um nothing happens because <laughs> i have to, of course to look through the camera i will also make it full screen for the full effect and wow isn't that nice we got already some motion and we don't have to program anything we don't even have to set keyframes i love it so this motion is a little bit uh, too strong i used uh, zero uh, dot uh, zero oh two five and then Mm, there is an X amplitude here. If I set it to 10, we see the camera is moving. F oh, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to rotate the camera. I'm sorry. I will correct it. Oh, no. The camera actually did not move. So it's good. The camera moves uh, forward and backward a little bit, which is nice because we now see a little bit better our little parallax effect here. Uh, but 10 is too much. I just set it to 2 and then I'm, I'm happy. Okay. So, and now uh, there comes um, a little bit unreal specific part. As you can see, the um, colors are not exactly like before. The colors should be like this, but they are like this. There are reasons for that. And I would like to show you some of them. No, I will show you all of them, hopefully. <laughs> um, the first thing in the project settings in rendering, I already have this disabled. You should uh, disabled exposure if you don't you will get a very 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 bright image because of the eye adaption so if we disable that uh, that's already nice and by the way I also disabled the anti-aliasing um, because it blurred everything a little bit and I did not like that so um, and there's one thing here which um, which we still have to disable it's the tone mapper uh, you can use the show thing here and disable the tone mapper here. This uh, helps already. The problem is when you render out the sequence and usually I guess you want to create a video, uh, this setting is ignored. So I would recommend just let it, uh, let it uh, be like that. And the only um, way I uh, found to disable tone mapper is by using a post posix volume. I just put it into the scene make it very big 150 scale okay we are now in the post process volume and if you search for material you can say um, please add one here choose asset reference and then I will choose um, the post process 
material I already created, but I will show you how uh, it it works. It's, it's very simple, very simple material. So the most important part is here, material domain you set to post process. And then down here, and that's even more important, the setting, <laughs> is the blendable location is replacing the tone mapper, okay? And then in here, you just type uh, scene texture, create this node and uh, select in here, post process input zero. Then you have this little uh, friendly node here. And then this is the gamma correction, uh, the power of uh, zero dot four five four five then you save it assign it and then you will have uh, something like this which when i uh, disable the post positive volume you will now see that there is a slight difference okay and this should look basically exactly like the unlit version oh, okay so i would uh, call this a success okay so now we are basically ready for uh, for continuing with our little uh, scene setup, uh, let me just check. So we uh, no, let me go into the camera again uh, and play it for a short moment because sometimes um, uh, it it gets bright again when you play, but not everything is is very fine here. Okay, uh, and now we want to add some motion because except from the camera, there is nothing moving here, so that's a little bit boring. And now we come to this. Um, part where I explained to you that I made a shader already. So you can just reuse this shader if you want. Um, and the process is the following. It's called super duper shader. So you click on it. And then uh, first uh, I make, of course, a nice materials is uh, plural, right? So there are many materials in there. And I just copied in there. Uh, copy so that would be something you can also do eh? just copy the material and then the process is the following you create a material instance in that case I will call it mi cloud 01 because I want to move the clouds back there and uh, just to show you um, a little bit of overview of about this shader this shader is very simple basically apart from some extra options it's just two layers scrolling on top of each other and getting multiplied with each other and then there's some distortion happening to add some extra wiggly motion um, I will and, and you can enable and disable all these things here with these checkboxes so when I uncheck UV distortion for example you yeah now we see it's a boring noise <laughs> scrolling and uh, here for example I could use a different uh, texture by the way all these noise textures here are from uh, Lewis and Niels de Witt they offer um, uh, free noise texture packs I can heavily recommend to download and use these and uh, yeah you see now I have uh, this layer here and um, I can of course also animate this second layer and now we have two layers crawling on top of each other and getting multiplied so this is this is basically how this shader works, but you can do a, a lot of that or a lot with that. For this specific purpose, we don't need the second texture because our uh, cloud, yeah, we just want to have the clouds. And this shader works on the basis of grayscale masks, but our cloud texture sprites are already colored. So you have to disable use grayscale. Now we can and I will uh, put this here to the side. Now we can go into our textures folder, select our clouds, assign these here. Yeah, now we have nice green clouds because this shader colorizes everything and we can just set this to white. And now we got our clouds running. And uh, the only thing <laughs> is that the clouds are very fast right now. And there's this option here, TS uh, in front, it means tiling and speed. And in our case, we just want a very low speed, almost not moving in the preview. So and that's it for this material. I can uh, close this now, select our clouds in here, and then in material, say clouds, and then assign it here. And ah, now we already have moving clouds. Isn't that beautiful? So security safe, just in case Unreal doesn't like what we are doing here. And now we can continue. Oh, by the way, if you feel uh, lucky, you can, of course, now try to play a little bit around with the UV distortion. Um, this is a bit crazy. 
but if you um, use it very very subtle um, you can by the way control the distortion on uh, uh, separately for the vertical and the horizontal axis so you could say we don't distort on the uh, horizontal axis but we only distort uh, above the vertical and we do it only a little bit and then maybe we make the speed of this scrolling texture very very subtle and that's and in here it's, it's still a lot so let's just tweak this a little bit I, I will let it like this is, it's a bit too strong but at least um, you can see it then in the stream I hope and now you see that the clouds are just uh, they are just wobbling a little bit um, and I think with a little bit of tweaking this is a nice extra detail um, the people who watching your eight hour music video will then after four hours notice hey look the clouds are wobbling for the next layer uh, I would say we uh, now um, have a look on these flags you can just duplicate this uh, this material instance we just created because uh, we already did a lot of setup in, in there flags Oop. and instead of uh, of the clouds I will just now select the flags this one here and of course uh, we don't want to have the flex moving <laughs> so uh, just to show you what happens this is something we don't want so I will uh, set the movement to zero but we want to have it wiggle around way more because they should uh, the strong wind should be visible here and to um, to yeah, uh, give it a more global wobble effect I will reduce the tiling of this normal map which controls the distortion so that we have a bigger wobbling distortion here and uh, I will only make it on the horizontal axis and not on the vertical one and maybe this is a bit too strong but something like this um, could work nicely as wind and there is some little artifact here the pixels from here which we are pushing around are entering the texture from the other side this is um, I mean it's good for the pixels but we don't want that sorry pixels we can um, fix that by opening the texture and now I have to save sometimes it crashes when you change these options and you can set this to clamp Boop. and then oh no we don't have anything anymore is that normal what what why is it what <laughs> I'm not sure what's um, what's happening now like I said I did this so often and the texture never just disappeared I will just set it again to wrap let's see if we okay we see it again here yeah, so that's a bit weird let me uh, try uh, again and set only this axis to clamp okay so let's uh, only set um, the horizontal axis to clamp so now the pixels are gone here and let's just ignore that this other uh, setting just made our texture disappear and again we have to now simply uh, go into our material assign the flags and okay maybe that's a little bit a little bit too uh, fast so I will just go in here and um, uh, set the scrolling speed of our distortion texture to something lower and now we got nice moving flex isn't that beautiful and when we uh, go into our sequence and play this we get already a nice uh, feel for the scene and now I would like to um, so, th so this is basically everything for the shader based motion all the other things you saw the birds the fire the smoke everything uh, also the, the, there are where some glints on the water uh, um, maybe I should show and not only um, tell <laughs> so uh, here there are th this fire there are some glints on the water I hope you can see this um, the birds and the smoke columns here uh, all of them are based on the same uh, technique basically so you you already have the knowledge to replicate that um, but now I, I would like to focus on the snowflakes because they are the one thing which are uh, well, different and it's a particle system but what uh, is very nice you don't have to be um, a particle master with Niagara because when you create a Niagara system you can say 
hey, give me a new system from uh, selected emitters. You can just select this and then you can take the fountain, double click it, finish. And then I will call it NS for a Niagara system and call it uh, snow and save everything. And then we can directly, oh, I will just jump out of the camera, move it in here in the scene, set it to uh, zero, zero, uh, zero, zero. Okay, move it a little bit to the side and uh, <laughs> it already looks nice and we didn't do anything for that. It's almost free. I will just uh, move it so that it points into the direction of the camera and a little bit. So where's the camera? Here's the camera. So we see now the snowflakes come in from the side. That's very nice. And we can already see that there's a sorting problem happened because our snowflakes should be uh, before this little person here. So we can easily change that by like by when we select our particle system and go uh, sort for sorting and then there is a translucency sort priority. I just set this to 20 and now we should uh, see a very nice uh, snow in front of everything. And I will just save that and then open the system. And now we will just change some settings, but the majority is already done. Um, we can delete the gravity because uh, the snowflakes, they don't have to fall down. In shape location, we can increase this radius from which the particles are spawned so that they are maybe even bigger so that they are not spawning from a too small source. And then the color would be nice. I will just set uh, uh, the alpha to a very low value so that they are nice and subtle. And then, uh, and this is the most important thing, adding a curl noise force with a noise strength of 5000. And now our uh, snowflakes are already wiggling around very nicely. And the only thing now is that I want to have them a little bit stretched along their uh, velocity direction. By the way, I click here, press G, the, there was this little grid uh, visible here. I don't like that. It uh, hurts the perfect um, concept. <laughs> so, okay, uh, now back to the um, particle system. We can easily set the sprite renderer to alignment, velocity aligned. Not much have changed so far, but when we add in particle update, um, sprite there's a scale sprite size by speed option and in here we can say hey uh, along the speed we want to have um, the the y axis a little bit uh, less wide oh no uh, sorry it's the x axis actually and now we got these nice snowflakes going on here and uh, add cold to our scene so that's nice um, now you also know how I did uh, above the fire, there were some little um, sparkles <laughs> happening and this is exactly the same. And now there's one element uh, I would like to show you and it is actually the smoke columns we saw before, just so that you see these things here. And those are actually can, maybe I should just open the C here. If we go into the wireframe mode, you see that these uh, are very simple geometries. And usually we would have to go to uh, Blender or Max or Maya to generate uh, such a geometry and then import it here. Uh, and uh, But like I said, I wanted to explore the new cool uh, modeling features in Unreal because I didn't even know that they existed. To enable them, you go into Edit Plugins and then here you search for Modeling and there are the Modeling Tools Editor Mode, they are in Beta. And while you are in here, you can also enable the UV Editor just because, why not? And it is actually very, very uh, nice. They are a little bit wonky, but still I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that we have something like that. So I will go into this uh, orthogonal view now maybe uh, at first in wireframe mode. And then here in the select mode, you can uh, switch to modeling. This is new and you can 
investigate all these little icons. These are all little uh, modeling tools, which uh, is quite complex. And we will start by using a rectangle. I will just click and when I'm happy with my rectangle, I complete and now it's there and I will scale it up a notch. Okay, and now we have this. And already here, mm, we see uh, the nice advantage of these modeling tools because we can, for example, with the triangle edit, we can now click one of the vertices and then we move it around and do real modeling directly in Unreal. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I find uh, that it's very, very nice. But for my use case, I actually don't need it. Uh, what I did to make these little smoke columns very simple. I just scaled it roughly to the size I want later. And then I used the remesh. There are too many icons. A remesh function to set it to a lower value so that I just get a little bit more uh, geometry. Accept. And now I use the lattice deform. And now I can just, I mean, I guess you all guys know what a lattice does. But ask yourself, did you ever see someone do it directly in Unreal? Because I did not. And uh, I like it. So, uh, like I said, sometimes <laughs> I, I, I have problems clicking the little gizmos. You have to aim very precisely. But um, then everything is, is quite nice. And yeah, you can just do it like this. And of course, there are more tools. There is um, uh, uh, subdivision and uh, 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 yeah, uh, more things. I, I really wanted to just uh, use this opportunity to show you that these tools existed. And if you have more interest in them, you can discover them by yourself. For my purpose, um, it is enough because I really wanted to use simple geometries to add motion and, and life to the scene and I don't didn't want to uh, go overboard. The only other uh, very nice thing is that I can now manipulate also the, the, um, the pivot. Whoop, accept and now the pivot is there. So that's nice. Um, and just that you uh, saw it in Actor, Asset Tools, UV Editor, there's the now built-in UV Editor. You have already very practical, by the way, uh, UV options in the modeling tools. You can just uh, do an unwrap or an auto UV in here. Uh, but here is another editor. And if you click this little uh, icon up here, then and, and here the, you can select the vertices, for example. And here is our geometry. You can just move the vertices here. I don't have a need for that right now, but it's very practical. Just save it. And by the way, your um, your geometries are saved in this folder, underscore generated. It's automatically generated for you. Okay, so and here is our plane. And I will assign a material I already used, uh, I already prepared. But as I said, you have all the knowledge to understand what's happening. It's based on the super duper shader, like everything in the scene. And we just see this texture, which I painted with a um, little uh, noise cloud pack and it just scrolls over the surface of this cube thing and in addition there's a uh, just another little noise crawling on top but uh, yeah it's almost not really noticeable i think there's not even distortion happening no there's no distortion and this little friendly material is now assigned to our small column and I can put it here to have it nicely there. And the only um, weird thing is, of course, that it just ends here. But luckily, uh, the shader knows about vertex color. And luckily, there is this uh, mesh paint mode. This is nothing new. This is actually quite old. But you can paint vertex color on your meshes. And it's important here. I will set alpha to zero. And now this is very important. Easy to oversee, especially when this is not wide enough. Look here. You see red, green, blue, but there is something hidden here. It hides in the dark and you have to really uh, <laughs> widen up this area to enable that the alpha is actually painted. And now you can, I put the strength a bit higher. You can actually paint. Why is it not perfectly working? Maybe I have to do it in the, 
perspective mode uh, you can paint on these vertices and paint away a little bit of the smoke to let it fade it's also very nice for some extra control yes so that's nice and we see oh, oh, oh we have sorting problems that's of course not good but we already solved them with our other uh, with our uh, um, uh, particle system and this is by the way now very useful because i named all these things uh, by their sorting order and just i mean the the sprites usually work out of the box but i will still assign here a zero because this is named zero then this one gets one this one gets two this one gets three and so it's everything is in order six seven and when i want my little cloud um, uh, my little cloud column in front of the midground sprite and i set it to four because the midground sprite is three and four is better than three and that's why we see now the cloud yes so that's basically um all you need to know and i will now do something i will check the time which is i think i'm i'm quite okay it should be like um 40 minutes or something so let me just uh, show you in the other scene some extra comments about uh, some uh, where is it some uh, things just to point out okay like i said everything you know you already know <laughs> all you need you already know sorry but just a little extra words the fire um come on i would like to select the fire okay then i will create it here it's just a plane but uh when you open the sequence and you play it you will see that this little plane sneaky sneaky is actually animated that itself is not really a revelation i will just show it to you uh, it's, it's really hard to see why can't i uh, keep it selected and play the sequence okay yeah so this is uh, animated to to fake a little bit that the wind goes with the fire and there is something uh, uh this sequence is very long it goes i don't know five minutes or something i would be too lazy to animate it all the way but luckily when we go into the keyframes here it's just the transformation and um, i animated the scale and a little bit the location these keyframes here are animated and there's no wonder that the plane moves but Look at this, it moves even in the area without these keys. And this is because I right clicked here and then pre-infinity and post-infinity I set to cycle. And then you only have to animate a little part. Uh, this is uh, common in normal uh, animation programs like Maya, but I was um, delighted to see that it also works in Unreal. Um, the shader itself, like I uh, promised you, is the super duper shader. And it's just a noise and this flare texture i stole from um, let's see it's from nils david package and yeah it's just some scrolling stuff so so nothing nothing special here okay um then the the glinting on the water you can see the water actually doesn't move but i added a little extra geometry on top which i created with the modeling tools. I basically uh, used a very rough shape, put the vertices in place as good as it was possible, and then I re-meshed uh, it and then uh, yeah, uh, fit, yeah, put it more closely to the, to the, the area I wanted to cover. Uh, and as soon as I was happy, I added a material and you guess it, it's also the, uh, based on the super duper shader. And in this case, it's just the both layers are using this beautiful noise. And when it gets multiplied with each other, and then I also enabled in that case smooth step. So without that, it would uh, be a little bit soft, but with smooth step, it gets a little bit harsher. And then you get these little glints here which are also distorted a tiny bit. It doesn't look so nice from when you are very, very close. Like here, this is like, meh, I don't know. But from here, it's, oh, the water moves. How uh, nice. And then something 
special are the little birds. So the little birds are moving their wings. And this is also based on the shader, but also it is a particle system. So we see our bird sprites coming on here. And it is in fact just, let me show you the texture. The bird is this little texture here. Nothing, <laughs> it's really just one bird, but it's important that the body of the bird is in the, in the middle. And then the material, um, yum, 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 where is the material for the bird here, looks like this. And there's this specific uh, distortion normal map I, I created, which um, in the middle, you can see this is the common normal map color for nothing happens, okay? There's no uh, vector direction here and th this is exactly what I want because in the middle there's the body of the uh, bird and I don't want to have it moving. But here these colors um, say basically move the pixels or, or distort the pixels downward or upward. And this texture is scrolling um, vertically over our little bird. And I can show you when we, uh, the tiling, uh, the vertical tiling is zero, when it's one, it would look like this. Let's test it with two. Okay, now it gets really weird. Um, so this texture is just moving vertically over our little bird. And because of the tiling of zero, it looks like this. And we can also make the bird very fast like so or so. <laughs> now the birds, oh, they are in a hurry. <laughs> they are very much in a hurry. I like that actually. Let's leave it like that. This is amazing. And I think uh, with that, I can <laughs> say thank you for your attention. Uh, these birds are running to the end of the talk and I hope you uh, liked it. I hope you learned something. And now we are ready for a Q and A if you have any questions. Uh, we just have one question. Is this workflow of adding motion to concept art something you use in production? Uh, no, uh, not at all. Uh, to be honest, uh, I, I mean, I don't work with concept artists and I also don't work in motion graphics. I do effects for 3D games. So, uh, no, uh, this is the first time I did this and it was just that I wanted to explore this um, direction because when I see these things on YouTube, uh, these music videos, I am always uh, delighted by how not much is necessary to make it look so much more um, alive. And um, yeah, when I when I thought about a topic for this presentation, then I I I thought, hey, maybe that would be a very nice thing. And also, I it was an opportunity for me to uh, mention my super duper shader because maybe it helps people who are not uh, uh, don't have the time or the capability to create their own shader to just reuse that and then um, make something move with it. Yeah. Uh, how performant is your? I'm sorry, Emil. How performant is your super duper shader? suitable for games or is it a bit too spicy for that? Uh, so the shader, the, the question is basically if it's uh, if the shader is performant enough and I would say yes because it's not very complicated like I said it's just uh, some um, some uh, layer scrolling it's, it's not doing too advanced things and when you disable the features there is new versions of the shader generated uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, permutations per shader depending on all the switches so the single shaders should be not a problem at all and like i said there's not too much um, in there and my workflow would be in a production to use a shader which allows you to work fast and as you saw i just can reuse this shader very easily by creating material instances and um, and then just clicking me something together and then I can work very fast. And if at the end you see, oh, uh, there, there is this uh, bird swarm and it's killing the performance and all the switches in the shader are a fault of that, then of course I can optimize that and make an optimized bird shader. 
but um, I learned that there is it takes so much time to find out what looks good that it's very important that the artists can work as fast as possible and iterate as quickly as possible. Um, and so I found it uh, useful to have an, a little shader like that. But like I said, it's it's not too complicated, that thing. Right. Would you say this workflow could be used as an alternative to establishing shots in 3D? I'd assume there's great potential in building huge 3D scenes, then rendering just one frame, and using that frame to create establishing shots without worrying about performance or ridiculous render times. Yeah, I mean, hmm, I'm not sure because I'm 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 not working in 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 these areas like creating establishing shots or cutscenes. My feeling is that the modern engines are so good. I mean, when we look at Lumen and Unreal and um, uh, now I forgot the word for this technology where you can have millions of trillions of polygons and the engine doesn't even care. <laughs> with, with this technology, I, I don't see that we have too much um, performance problems anymore. Uh, but I mean, yeah, why not? I, I, I see the, the advantage more in that it would cost so much time to build this scene in 3D and to be able to have a matte paint, matte painter uh, uh, to create it and then adding motion for me, this is the big advantage that it takes less time uh, because it's 2D, but good enough because it looks awesome. <laughs> yeah. will be our next talk and uh, Simon thank you so much for all the useful information I have learned. It was a pleasure. Have a very very nice uh, day or evening and um, bye bye. <laughs>